Thank you, Lord Provost. To ask the City Convener for Equalities what action the Council is taking against CERCO if it believes they mi issued misleading statements about members' awareness and support for their new lock change policy on asylum accommodation. Councillor Aitken. Um, I will respond to this question. Um, yes, uh, since the political and public backlash which followed the announcement in the summer by CERCO that they plan to evict up to 330 asylum seekers. Um, the company has attempted on several occasions to recover their corporate reputation by means of misleading use of language, conflation of separate operational areas, and in some cases, outright misinformation. Um, I'm not sure what the council can or should do other than restate again and again uh, that the terms in which CERCO has characterised the interactions between officers and councillors and themselves um, are not accurate. So to reiterate again the key point um, that the council has made publicly um, and which I made in my submission to the Home Affairs Select Committee recently, there was no meeting between CERCO councillors and council officers to discuss CERCO's policy of lock changes. A meeting took place on June the 27th between CERCO councillor Leyden um, and officers from the Health and Social Care Partnership. This was an introductory meeting with the new city representative for CERCO, where there were discussions around how the council would support asylum seekers with a positive decision and those with a negative decision, but whose substantial vulnerability made them eligible to be supported by the council. No meeting took place between CERCO and Councillor Leyden around political messaging or lock changes, and certainly not one where Councillor Leyden agreed to either of these. A crucial point to note is that Councillor Leyden was not copied into the email where this allegation was made by CERCO, and when she did become aware of this untrue allegation, she contacted CERCO on July the 27th, stating, I am not and I do not believe I ever indicated that I am supportive of a protocol for lock changing being implemented. Council and HSCP staff and Councillor Leyden have been rightly focused on those people we are permitted to support, people with a positive decision and people with a negative decision but whose vulnerability makes them eligible for council support. We have said that council officers were aware in very general terms that CERCO was considering lock changes, uh, which have taken place in the city before under a previous contractor. Um, this wasn't escalated to senior social work manager, how, management. However, the intention to change the locks of up to 330 people was absolutely not discussed or raised by CERCO until the point they made it public in July, an action which, in Councillor Leyden's wholly appropriate description at the time, blindsided both her, the City Council and HSCP officers. Supplementary, Councillor Long. Uh, I'm grateful for that response from the Leader. Um, I'm sure the Leader understands that, um, that there are matters arising from the recent FOI release that were really concerning um, and that there has to be some accountability um, for that um, and that there also just has to be some, some clarity and, and transparency um, because the emails would not uh, what is in those emails does not necessarily line up with, with what has just been said. Um, so Greens have referred the matter to internal audit um, to look into this. Does the city convener agree that that is helpful in terms of transparency? And Councillor Aiken, you will get a chance to respond. I would uh, think, ask you, Councillor Long, to reflect on how you're wording this very carefully. My point is that there's a need for clarity and transparency and that is why I have referred the matter to internal audit. I hope that this can be agreed that this is for transparency sake and I hope that uh, the leader where will, act, will, I would ask the leader to ensure that all parties would comply with that. Councillor Aiken. I have just provided clarity and transparency and I am deeply concerned deeply concerned that Councillor Long chooses to cast aspersions on the integrity both of Councillor Leyden and the professional officers who have been working in this field and working with vulnerable people. An internal audit investigation is where there are questions raised about the behaviour um, or about the integrity of an officer or councillor in, in this chamber. There are no questions 
no questions in my mind, or nor should there be in the mind of any councillor, about the integrity and the actions of, of, um, of Councillor Leyden or any of the elected members who have been directly involved in this, and certainly not of professional officers. With your indulgence, Lord Clovis, I feel I have to address this one more minute. I'll tell you what's really concerning. What's Can really I concerning. ask everyone to be quiet? No, I'm, I'm allowing, Councillor Aiken, one second. One, one, wait. I'm allowing you another 10 seconds okay. because I interrupted before and it's been interrupted again. So I'm allowing you another 10 seconds to come up with a final answer. Thank What's you. What's really concerning is that the excuses and the obfuscations of the very corporation that is mishandling the, the, the asylum contract is being swallowed hook, line and sinker by people who should know better and then being repeated Counselor. apparently Counselor. in an attempt Time's up. to disseminate attacks on professionals and counsellors in